Hey, Dirt Magicians. Tis the season of garlic planting. Yeah, I did that really smoothly, right? As an urban farmer the last few years, it's one of my favorite things to plant because it's the last thing that I get to plant. It's my last opportunity to put something in the soil before winter sets in. It's a really easy crop once you've laid the groundwork. You, I've heard the phrase, set it and forget it, and that's so true for garlic. So although I've been pretty successful in growing it the last few years, I went a deep dive into the research because I wanted to make sure no matter where you're growing, Growing, I was giving you the knowledge to be set up for a successful garlic growing here. Also, we have a freebie for you. Click the link in the description box below to download that freebie. And that freebie is all in the vegetable family. The reason this is so important is that our different vegetables belong to a family of other vegetables and they typically have very similar pests and diseases. So when we know which vegetables belong to which families, we can make better informed decisions around management of pests and diseases. I'm actually going to go into more detail about that for garlic specifically later in this video. So make sure to click the link in the description box below and get that all in the vegetable family freebie now. In this video, we will discuss first how to choose what garlic you should plant. Secondly, the life cycle of a garlic so you understand what's happening because it's there for nine months. There's a lot of different things happening. Then we will discuss when you should plant your garlic. Then move on to how do we prepare our growing space for garlic. And then we will actually prepare the cloves themselves within a bulb. We will plant the garlic together. We're going to mulch. And if you're new to our channel, our mission here at Dirt Magicians is to help you learn from other gardeners, i.e. Dirt Magicians, by peeking over their garden fence. So let us help you learn by peeking over the fence. And today we're going to be planting garlic here in Trisha's yard in her Lumox bags, which are these guys here. Okay, so firstly, there's two broad categories of garlic. We've got our hard neck varieties and our soft neck. Now, the way that they're described is this is hard <laughs> and this ripped off because I was playing with it, but the neck of this is soft. And soft neck garlic is much better suited to more temperate climate, so zones eight to 10 typically. And as you can see, the bulbs are a lot smaller, but they store for a much longer period of time. Also, when you see braided garlic, it's a lot easier to do with the soft neck because because it's soft. Uh, the hard neck garlic is better for colder regions, so zone seven and below. It, as you can see, has much larger bulbs than a head, um, but it does not store for as long and it's not as pretty to braid. This one also gets garlic scapes, so we have to remove in the summer, but they're a really tasty midsummer treat, and that's the flower of the garlic itself. So now that we've chose between hard neck and soft neck varieties, where do we get our garlic from? And where I recommend not getting it from is the grocery store because we don't know where that's been grown and it may not be adapted to our climate for growing. Uh, my best recommendation would actually be a local farmer that's got disease free seed. Because again, you don't wanna grow something that got some sort of disease and is going to be susceptible to it or even bringing it into your soil. If you were saving garlic from last year and you wanna plant it this year, pick your biggest bulbs. I know this is gonna hurt because they're the best ones and you're gonna to wanna to eat them, but you're more likely to get more beautiful bulbs of the same size the following year. For me personally, growing in the Pacific Northwest, I love red Russian garlic. I find I get big bulbs and big cloves and it's really tasty. So I just quickly wanna talk about the life cycle of the garlic so you can understand what's happening and why we have to follow the steps that we have to follow. So we put the garlic in, in usually between September and December and roots form. And then everything stops and the garlic needs a vernalization period. So that means a cold period of at least four to eight weeks, uh, four degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Fahrenheit as kind of the maximum temperature. And that's going to trigger clove formation in the spring. Then in the spring, our baby shoots come up. The photosynthesis feeds into the bulb formation. Then we get a big, beautiful flower, which is that curl in our hard neck garlic. We're gonna cut it, we're gonna eat it wait another month, the leaves die back and the garlic will be ready to harvest. If you're wondering what vernalization means, it's basically a cold period that triggers some kind of growth to occur in the spring, which in this case is clove to bulb. All right, we're getting really close to actually planting the garlic, so stick with me. First now, we're going to talk about how we prepare our growing space to grow garlic. Firstly, garlic is pretty easy. It just needs six inches of growing depth. So we can grow it in a pot, a grow bag, a garden bed, wherever. Today, we're growing in the Lumox bags. 
The one consideration though, is we do not want any plant from the Allium family to have been grown in the soil before, or at least in the last four years, which is where that all in the vegetable family freebie will come in handy, which you can find in the description box below. And alliums are what garlic is part of, and that would also include things like chives and onions. Garlic is susceptible to white rot, which can kill the plant, so that's why we don't want to plant them in the same place, because white rot can live in the soil for many years. So if we planted a different allium into this beforehand, it could get diseased. Now, garlic itself just needs a neutral pH, and it needs well-draining soil. So we want to make sure if it's a pot, there's really good holes. The Lumox naturally filters out the water, or we want nice and loose soil. And to be clear, we're not sponsored by Lumox. It's just the bags that we currently have. So we're going to use them and I like them. Uh, the last thing is our soil needs nutrients for the garlic. So if we live in a dry climate, then we can add a compost with a minimum of 2% nitrogen as we're planting. However, because I'm here in the Pacific Northwest, if I do that, it is going to rain and leach out all of the precious nutrients I need. So I'm gonna wait to the spring to add that one. So when do we actually plant the garlic? As I mentioned, it's in the fall and we have to do a balance act where we want it warm enough that roots can form but not warm enough that green shoots are gonna form especially if we live somewhere cold because if we get long periods below 60 degrees Fahrenheit then those shoots will die in the winter so we will lose the garlic that way so for where I am here in the Pacific Northwest we're kind of looking at a planting of mid-October to late November um, for those further south you can be going into December January the importance here though is we need that fertilization period I mentioned so we need quite cool temperatures for at least four weeks which is why the fall planting makes so much sense for those of you further south you might be able to sneak away with a early spring planting as well so with my red russian garlic here i'm just going to take off some of the papery husks and as you can see there's individual cloves we're gonna kind of gently grab those and break them off. We'll wanna keep some of that papery husk because it'll help protect the garlic over the winter. And another thing to note is that we have to plant garlic directionally correct. So I pulled it from here. This side is where the roots are gonna come and this is where the shoot's gonna come. So that's the way that we'll plant it into the ground. So I'll just kind of go along the clove, pulling off the different pieces. Like that, and then we'll be ready for planting. Look at those big, beautiful cloves. Love red rushes. The moment you've waited for, the cloves are ready to go and it's time to plant the garlic. So remember, we wanna plant the garlic with this side, which is gonna be the roots facing down and our shoot facing up. We want to plant it about two inches deep, which for me is about to my mid knuckle and six inches apart, which for me is about a hand length, if you can see here. So I'm gonna make my hole just past my knuckle. I'm gonna put the garlic right in there and then we're gonna go a hand widths apart. I'm gonna put another one right here from where the knuckle is. So I kind of move my finger, replace it, put it down. Again, the flat part facing down. Hand, which is six inches right here. Put a finger in, put that garlic down, another hand. So I think I'm gonna get about four garlic in here and then squeeze that down. And then we're just gonna lightly cover it. We don't have to press it down or anything like that. Hello, we planted our garlic. I forgot to mention that Trisha had watered this before we actually planted because it was super bone dry, which can actually cause the soil to be hydrophobic, which means it wicks away the water. So thanks Trisha for doing that. Uh, the next step here is we're going to mulch with straw. We wanna protect our soil uh, over the winter months and all of, for us, the rain that's going to happen. So we want about two inches of straw, which I'm gonna put right on top. You can also le use leaves as well. And then it's important to water it in so that it actually stays and it's not gonna get blown away. If you live in the deep south, then grass clippings might be another option if you're lucky enough to have grass that's still growing. I mentioned this before, but I wanna bring it up again. If I lived somewhere that was really dry, I would have actually added a compost before I added the straw mulch here. And again, the compost needs to be 2% nitrogen, which will be the first number on your compost bag to make sure there's enough nitrogen for our garlic. For me here, I'll add it in the springtime. So we'll remove the straw and I'll add compost at the top to feed nutrients for our garlic plants. Also, don't forget that we have a freebie for you called All in the Vegetable Family. Knowing what family your vegetables belong to helps in so many different ways for managing your garden. So click the link in the description box below and get that freebie now. See you guys next time. Gosh, golly gee, it's real loud here in the big city with all them planes. <laughs>